What's up, fam? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Phil Sarpon. This is Phil's Guide to Side B. This channel is dedicated to all things clinical psychology. If you are interested in psychology, if you care about self care or mental health, or if you want a little bit of a sneak preview into what grad school might look like for you, then this is the channel for you. So, those of you may already know that I am a clinical psychology graduate student pursuing my PsyD degree. And today, the topic is going to be all about clinical placements and the specific placement that I've been going into for my practicum site starting out this year. Now, for anyone that doesn't know what clinical placements are, there's a number of different words for clinical placements. There's also practicum sites, there's clinical practicum sites. Basically, all of this is are training sites where psychology students or even in any type of mental health professional, master's or doctoral level program, whether it's in relation to psychology, clinical psychology, counseling psychology, PsyD, PhD. Basically, you're gonna have a didactic portion of your program. This is gonna be in relation to classes, studying up on the history of psychology, research, therapy, all of those different things. And then you're gonna have another section that is going to be dedicated to actually working in mental health clinics. This could be a number of different mental health clinics in your city or in your, in your area or in hospital areas in the area where students can go into these practicum sites, learn from actual counselors, learn from actual psychologists or neuropsychologists, and work under supervision to get the number of hours that they need to become a therapist or to become a counselor, to become a psychologist. And so basically for most programs, at least for the program that I'm in, it works where the first year of school is basically just classes. And then from year two to year four, you're doing a mixture of classes as well as a mixture of being in your clinical practicum sites. Now I have good news for you guys. The clinical practicum site, the first one that I'm going to start out in, in my second year is going to be a neuropsychology clinical practicum site. So I'm super excited about this because now it means that I get to learn all about neuropsychology. For anyone that doesn't know what neuropsychology is, I did a, a video about this months ago, but basically neuropsychology is very similar to clinical psychology. What's gonna happen with neuropsychologists is that neuropsychologists can do everything that a clinical psychologist can do. They can do therapy, they can do psychological assessment and diagnostics, and in some states they can prescribe medication. The biggest difference between neuropsychology and clinical psychology is training. So neuropsychology may have more training in relation to working with kids that have ADHD or autism or epilepsy or dementia. Anything that's in relation to the brain and some type of neurological disorder, that is what neuropsychologists specialize in. Their education might be the same amount of time as a clinical psychologist, but it might be a little bit longer when they go on internship or when they're doing postdocs or when they're studying for their licensure. So the, the programs are basically the same. In fact, there's a lot of clinical psychology schools that will have different paths. So they might have a general clinical psychology path and then they might have a neuropsychology path. So it's one school, but there's different tracks that you can take in terms of specializing for either neuropsychology or some other specialty in clinical psychology. So again, this looks different from state to state and schools may go about it different ways. But neuropsychologists and clinical psychologists are very, very similar. It's just that neuropsychologists can have additional certifications in basically doing other things, more things related to neurological disorders. So if uh, someone goes through a car accident and has a traumatic brain injury, you're gonna have neuroscientists in the room, you're gonna have doctors in the room. They might go to a neuropsychologist to figure out, okay, hey, these are the parts of the brain that are affected how is this gonna to relate to someone's behavior? How is it gonna affect their emotions? How is it gonna affect their psyche? And so that's what neuropsychologists are there for. They're there to combine elements of the brain and the body. That means that they also learn a lot of things about the brain. They know different brain regions. They understand how neurons work. They understand how the central nervous system works. So they do know a lot of things in terms of anatomically about the brain and physiologically how the brain works and functions, but they also have, of course, the psychology background to bring it all together and to help neuroscientists or doctors understand what's going on in a neurological disorder and how is it going to affect someone's personality, their behavior, their emotions, and so forth. There's definitely a lot of different ways to become a neuropsychologist. Typically, you would get an actual PhD or a PsyD in clinical psychology, but there are also other programs that are specific for just neuropsychology as well. Again, they're gonna work primarily with doctors and physicians and neuroscientists 
in order to diagnose certain neurological disorders. So I am super excited to start my neuropsychology placement site. Again, I'm gonna be learning things about the brain, I'm gonna be learning things about different disorders, and so I'll definitely keep giving you guys some updates on how that clinical site is going. If you guys have any questions about neuropsychology or even, even more questions about what neuropsychologists do and how to become a neuropsychologist, definitely put it down in the comment section below. I'll make sure to look at those comments to see if I need to do any further explaining about neuropsychology. I hope that helps give you guys some more information about neuropsychology and what they do. And with that, I will see you guys in the next video.